Welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire Symposium. My name is Nav, and my pronouns are they, them. And my name's Harmit, and my pronouns are Hershey, like the chocolate. Also, Hershey's needs to sponsor us for the amount of times I've given them free advertising. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, but I don't know their but I don't know their manufacturing practices, so I don't know if I want to be endorsing that shit. Okay, yeah, but I've been endorsing it regardless of that for a while, so we may as well get paid for what I'm already doing. Sure, because that's what we do this for, money. <laughs> exactly. Um. Th- oh, yeah, this is A Clash of Kings, the wrap-up <laughs> in this episode. Throughout Westeros, the cold winds are rising. From the ancient citadel of Dragonstone to the forbidding lands of Winterfell, chaos reigns as pretenders to the Iron Throne of the Seven Kingdoms stake their claims throughout Tempest, Turmoil, and War. As a prophecy of doom cuts across the sky- Oh yeah! A com- sorry. <laughs> a comet the color of blood and flame, five factions struggle for control of a divided land. Brother plots against brother, and the dead rise to walk in the night, against a backdrop of incest and fratricide, (laughs) alchemy and murder, the price of glory is measured in blood. Colossal, staggering, Martin captures all the intoxicating complexity of the wars of the roses or imperial Rome, SFX. (laughs) Okay, I didn't expect you to read the reviews. (laughs) (laughs) There was only one. I was like, let's go for it. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast, everyone. This episode will definitely be a mess. That is a (laughs) promise (laughs) because there's like a lot of things to cover, but like no template for it so no structure yeah be prepared for scatterbrain and that's what we're in for right (laughs) yes sir i'm excited okay so harmut that was you reading the back of the second book what do you Mm -hmm. think of that um you know back of the book summary yeah i think like you know like the backdrop a backdrop of incest like (laughs) wow I was like, damn, okay. But no, I mean, like, I feel like they could, eat, they could, the back can never be, like, representative because, you know, it's meant to be, it's right. a lot of the times meant to be read beforehand. So I can't, like, say too much. But, but didn't nice the first little... one say something like, it has everything, fantasy, humor, romance. And we were like, what? <laughs> we were like, there's romance? no romance. Yeah. No. And, 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 like, the second one tried to push, like, some forms of, like, weird romance. But the first one, like, like there was nothing. Absolutely mm-hmm. nothing. Like, the second one tried, like, you know how you said, like, people were like, oh, Sansa and the Hound. Like, there was still- It wasn't so could, much like, romance inter- as, like, I know, but questionable you could, like, in- sexual I know, interest. But you could interpret it that way. But I feel like with the first one, there was, like, really nothing for you to even- go that direction but yeah no that was weird i forgot about that (laughs) but yeah no you can tell i forgot about the comment i was like oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. because i remember i used to be so angry because all of them would be like (laughs) it's my comment and i was like shut up (laughs) i just like sorry so what's your thoughts whose comment is it i don't man i don't know I, i personally stand like in the if it's anybody's comment it's danny's but like yeah I mean, that's fair because she like literally made it happen. Or well, I don't I know. Think I think. Well, we that- first heard about it in the last Danny chapter in a Game of Thrones, and mm-hmm. she did bring you know dragons back to this world, and it's like the dragon's tail or whatever. Like, yeah, I feel like yeah. No, but I I get that they're like, oh, I'm Mar-. like ob- obviously for the people who don't know yet that dragons are here, they're like, oh, I'm about to launch this rev or not revolution, like this like rebellion as this is happening. Oh, it's mine. But as someone who knows what Danny did, I'm like, no, stop. <laughs> right. But yeah, no, definitely I get that. If anyone, Danny. Okay. But I think I think it's I think it's beyond them. It's just, it's the universe slash right. the magical, like, 
um, entities of the world. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, Harmouth, who died in this book? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Okay, can you give me, like, major, like, the people you remember died? Okay. You don't have to, like, um, name every, you know. Like, Jamie. Okay. No. Um, Mandel Manderly, or no. <laughs> Mandel Manderly, what? I don't, I don't think, wait. Did a Manderly The Kingsguard die? dude? The Kingsguard dude? Mandel, wasn't his name Mandon Mandel? Moore? Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was, I was like, which one of the Manderleys died? I, no, I was just thinking Eminem, because I remember being like, oh, haha, he's Eminem, you know? Yeah. Um, because his name. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> very funny. So clever. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be clever. I was just trying to remember his name. Um, so he died, or yeah, well, he okay. caused his own death. Um, then, oh uh, well, like you know, everyone at Winterfell, like Old Nan, you know, Roderick, Lewin, our, you know, all those people. Um, the people at the mill, the Millers. <laughs> Um, like, the Miller's kids. Um, Theon, probably. Um, people who died in battle. And then, who was, um, I mean, technically, what's his name? Um, R- um, Jaken Hagar, technically, kind of right. not. Um, um, v- um, the dude who was in charge before Varga Hote became in charge, like all those people, um, that like Bolton was getting revenge on, he was like, Oh, you supported them, you know, and then they like went out and got revenge. Um Yeah. Did you cover Renly? Myself. Oh yes, <laughs> Renly. <laughs> what about um, Davos? Davos didn't die. Okay, all right. <laughs> if you Davos, say so. Are you confirming that Davos? I'm died? not saying anything. I'm just asking. Wait, wait. I'm trying to remember. Was he was there, on a happened? ship that blew up, and then he was uh, getting, oh. you know, pulled into the field right. of fire. Okay. Well, I'm still gonna have hope about that. So yeah, um, Davos right. didn't die, and then I guess just like, yeah, just like that. I think. I'm okay. confusing what I've already said. Oh, the like the house of the undying people, that all that. Yeah. Um lots of death all around. Was there more death in this book than there was in the last one? Oh, 100%. Oh, this yeah, cuz there was like the war. literal yeah, war. war. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, 100. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Uh okay. Then uh how about a uh, your best summary? <laughs> Of the book. No. Okay. Just let, just tell us what you can in okay. a minute. Okay. Okay, I will try. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we start the book and war all around. <laughs> Comet. Everyone's like charging, doing their rebellions or whatever. Stannis comes over from Dragonstone. He gets his people. You know, Danny's doing her thing. Um, it, you know, on Karth and then like that and then like the red path or whatever and then john's like the fist and then craster's keep and then like Arya's suffering Arya's suffering the entire time sansa's also suffering the entire time but different locations um <laughs> catelyn th- why am i going to all the characters this is a bad summary no okay no overall the war is happening and um stannis is kind of gaining ground and gaining people and his cre- he created those rumors at one point and then it, it looks like he's about to win because of the whole melisandre just being able to do a shadow baby thing but then um at the and by the time Stannis has his people, then, you know, they show up, um, t- Tywin and, um, the Tyrells show up and, like, they kind of save King's Landing or whatever. Um, so now the Lannisters are still in charge, even though we spent the okay, entire book trying to not get the Lannisters in charge. Yeah, that was, the- I-, I started going into <laughs> each of the characters instead of thinking about the book overall. I That's feel okay. like it's on. Un- Okay, first off, Red Path. Were you talking about, like, the red waste that Daddy had to navigate to get to Karth? Okay, Red Path. I was like, what what are you talking about? (laughs) That's what I was trying to say, but I forgot the terminology. Okay. Um, You know what? Time me. I'm going to try it. Okay. Okay, sounds (laughs) good. Let's see how Um, this goes. It's going to go bad. That's okay. I really hope I get it. 
no spoilers please no to the uh-huh. gods of the podcast okay sounds the good. pod okay. gods for <laughs> pod gods it sounds like you're calling like podrick a god <laughs> the pod gods okay in five four three two one go Okay, so the book starts, everything is kind of a shit show, like all the, you know, the trouble is brewing, Rob's got his party, Renly's got his party, Stannis his, Joffrey's like being a little douche in King's Landing, and Tyrion has to get a hold of that, and then Tywin's out there like doing shit, and it's all a mess. There's a lot of like death and dying and war, and that's pretty much all of Arya's chapters, like it's everyone's chapters, but specifically Arya's chapters. And eventually Catelyn goes down to Renly and is trying to like broker some kind of peace that goes down the drain when Renly is killed by a shadow baby and uh, Peach, (laughs) Peach, yes, very important MVP. Uh, Oh, no, you threw me off, man. I'll give you extra time. Okay, sorry. Uh, 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 Oh, no, I don't like this. Okay, uh, so yeah, Stannis now has like control over Renly's people. So he's like, I'm going to march on King's Landing. And Tyrion's like, shit, I got to get this shit together. I'm going to build a chain and I'm going to build some towers and I'm going to pull that chain and chop them in the river and burn them with wildfire, which is out of control due to all the dragons that Danny has over in Karth. And she's just, you know, lording it over everyone until... I did not get too much. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I interrupted you for 15 seconds, so I gave you 15 extra seconds. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, I see it. I see how it is on your side of things. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, like, like you know it, but you just, in, in the time pressure, you just forget how to say it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just it a lot. Okay, that was kind of fun, though. Like, it, it yeah. was bad, but it, I don't want to do it consistently because I know <laughs> I will spoil you. Like, at oh, the yeah. end of a book, it's like, okay, because I could kind of be like, okay, this set of the story, right? Right, yeah. As opposed to if, it, if I'm summarizing a chapter, I'm like, I'm going to go into things that have not happened. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I want you to do that. <laughs> uh, no. So, <laughs> um... Okay, we've done the summarizing. Now, I guess we go into uh, the book. I find okay. it so funny. You're trying so hard to adhere, adhere to a structure, but there I know is it's not, really not going to be one. Oh. But there's the the me and me is like trying real hard. Yeah. I get it. I appreciate the effort. Okay, how about we start with some questions that I asked you last time that can still apply to this book and we can have like a consistent like you know, we can look back and see how your thoughts have changed. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, like from the first book. Yeah. yeah. I thought you meant like last chapter and I was like, why would my thoughts change? But no, that makes sense. Yes, I got you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Question one. How did this book compare to your expectations? Ooh, I don't remember my expectations <laughs> of this book because I have no memory. Let me give, give me a second to try and think. You should have probably listened to, like, the wrap-up or something. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think... Because I think... You know what it was? So, for for the first book, like, for a lot of it, um, I wasn't, like, super, like, emotionally engaged. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, like... You know, when we started, I wasn't like, this is going to be a long-term thing. Like, obviously, <laughs> we were like, okay, this book... These books are gigantic. It has to be a long-term thing. But I wasn't, like, emotionally invested or whatever. But then eventually, by the time I was like, okay, yeah, like, we're actually going to get through these books. Like, this is a consistent thing in our lives now. I think by then, I was like, okay, I like this book. But then but then there was kind of that point in the first book where I was like, this is so unhappy. Like, why are we reading this? Yeah. But I think what happened was, because I remember listening the, to the wrap up once. And I think what happened that I think I should mention is that I was so positive with like my ratings and stuff. <laughs> and I think b- that happened because the book ended so well. Like we've talked about this before, like the yeah. ending of the first book versus the ending of the second book. So I feel like last time yeah. I like over, you know, was yeah. too nice about it. And this time I'm going to be too harsh about it because this book ended so dreadfully. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think my it expectations. Was still, like it was a sad ending, but I wouldn't say like it was a bad ending. <laughs> 
I wouldn't say it was bad, but I was like, It just didn't I pump was, you up. Yeah, I was yeah. really, like, I wanted, I was like, oh, if these books are going to depress me the entire way and then at the end give me some hope, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But they, this, it didn't give me that, so it made me a little sad. So, but, like, so what I'm trying to say is I was expecting... At the end of the first book, when I was looking forward to the second book, I had, like, such high expectations. <laughs> so I think because of that, it did disappoint me. But not because, because it of was the bad. book itself. Yeah. Not because it was bad, just because the ending of the first book was so, like, those few chapters were so, like, yeah. inviting and, like, nice. And I was like, oh my god, you know? So technically it was a disappointment, but not because it was bad. It was just because of my expectations. Yeah, that that was the question, so... <laughs> all right um what was the most surprising moment in this book oh um what was surprising i mean all of the like i died i'm no longer death dead <laughs> death i think i think that you know gives okay like, gi- like who strong... in particular i think because like the only example i can remember is like bran and rickon but i oh yeah you totally bought that that they were dead for a second (laughs) but i wouldn't say but i think yeah but i think i was kind of i wasn't like shocked that they came back i was just confused that they came back do you know what i mean yeah i wouldn't say i wouldn't qualify that as shocking i wasn't like what okay i'm trying to think what shocked me hmm um I think when I think Tyrion when Tyrion went out into the battle that was yeah. shocking cuz I fully was like he's not going to go out there and, and then that he did. he did well too. Yeah, I think that was kind of a shock. So I would I would say that was one of the bigger shocks for sure. I don't know if it was the most shocking but it was definitely a big shock. Okay. Yeah, that's a good moment. It was nice. It was very nice. Yeah. Okay, what's something that you saw coming from a mile away? Let's let me think back. Like you be- kept being like, I got my predictions right. Okay, so <laughs> uh, there was like the Brad and Rickon in Winterfell Crips. You kind of saw that one coming. Yes, um, I did. You did totally be. You were like, Stannis or Renly, one of them's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> right that's true okay yeah i would say the renly dying definitely because he was too like he, because the issue was compared to all of our other options obviously we want like rob to win you know mm-hmm. from the perspective we're reading from but other than rob and like maybe danny but danny's so far away that like she's not yeah. gonna win right now or whatever but like compared to our options he was the one where i was like you know what if renly's in charge for a bit i'm kind of okay with that you know Mm-hmm. so just because of that i was like there's You're no like, way there's no way it can actually happen <laughs> yeah it's got to be our worst option so yeah definitely yeah. i would say that was one of like i would say that was probably the biggest thing that i saw coming okay what was the most heart-wrenching moment <sighs> there was so much um i think huh I think some of Arya's chapters and just the stuff that, like, she had to overhear mm-hmm. and all of yeah. that. I would say, yeah, definitely Arya's chapters. Because the other, like... Oh, were you shocked when Jaken Hagar took his face off? That was that was shocking, too. But, like... Not a, quite as. I was kind of like, oh, okay. But, like, it was definitely shocking. But, right. yeah. Yeah, um, all of Arya's childhood <laughs> is heart-wrenching. <laughs> Yeah, it just all of the chapters of, like, them traveling and us seeing, like, Arya's condition and everyone else that they were passing's condition. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, Arya was almost in a better circumstance than them, but it was still, like, terrible. So kind of those chapters were definitely awful. Yeah. I'm realizing that maybe I should answer some of these, too. <laughs> yeah, I think you can, too. Okay, so how did the book compare to my expectations? I think, like, when I before we started reading it when I was doing like a reread of the series and stuff when I Mm -hmm. came when I was on this book I really enjoyed it and I was like oh this is so underrated and I still think this book is underrated because it's there's like a lot going on that you don't quite 
get. <laughs> okay. Um, but for some reason, even though it like compared to the first one, this one only took us like a year to cover. It, towards the end, it started feeling a little bit like a chore to me, the recordings. And I think that was just because my life was getting really busy and I was like, oh, this is one more thing I have to do. Yeah. So that like took some of the enjoyment out of it. But I right. did like the book. It It's like... It's a great Tyrion book. You know, Tyrion is like kind of yeah. at the forefront and oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um yeah, one of our one of our listeners did like a thing in the Discord channel where they like broke down how many chapters each, each person, person had and yeah. Tyrion was way ahead. <laughs> yeah. Join the Discord if you want to see that. <laughs> okay. Uh thanks. I can just rely on you to do all the plugs and I don't have to be like <laughs> Yes. Uh the most surprising. Okay. See, now this like I the show came first for me Mm, right and because didn't you say like I remember in the first book there would be some random moments where you'd be like oh I never knew this before because it wasn't in the show and it wasn't in any podcast that you'd listen to like was there any Mm -hmm. moments like that well by the time we started this book I had actually gone and read the books Oh, okay, like all of them. Yeah, so like nothing was new to me anymore, <laughs> like no tiny detail. Like I think I've read all the books like halfway through us covering a Game of Thrones. So that's not lo- no longer the case for me. Mm. Uh, but okay, let me think back to uh I think like The shadow baby thing really was surprising because it was like a whole new kind of magic. Like all of a sudden, oh, we could just make shadows, right? And the way it's done, like in the book, we see Renly die and there's like a shadow and like we hear nothing about it. And then like several chapters later, we find out how the shadows made and everything. In the show, the way they did it is we see the shadow being created and then, like, follow the shadow to Renly's death kind of thing. So Renly's death wasn't shocking, but the shadow being born was shocking. Like, what is happening? This is creepy. Right, yeah. Um, So that... um, Something that I saw coming from a mile away... I don't know. That's like hard to judge because I binged the show. So I I don't think I gave anything a time to like take a mile, you know? Uh, Okay. Like by the time you could have thought about it, you were already like five episodes later. Yeah. Most heart-wrenching moment. Uh, Definitely some of the Arya experiences. A lot of the Sansa experiences. I think for you though like right at the end with like the oh brand, yeah right? just and when stuff, they're like, leaving very, oh my god yeah. yes i forgot that i actually started crying <laughs> see i'm yeah. blocking that part out because i don't <laughs> want it to be sad like that but yes yeah that was see that was a, i think that broke you that moment wasn't heart-wrenching for me on any of like the previous reads i was like oh yeah oh. we're just moving on to the next one right but this right. time i like actually had to like had time to like stew in it yeah and it like really got to me <laughs> Yeah, Thank you for reminding think, me of that. Yeah. Um I'd say that. Answering on behalf of you. <laughs> but that. that's a that's actually a good answer that I forgot about or blocked out. Um <laughs> Okay, now moving on to other questions. What was your favorite moment? <gasps> Ooh. Okay, and for these, let's just whoever thinks of an answer first goes first. Um Okay. Um I'm going to look at that summary I sent to you so mm, that I can remind smart. me of stuff. I just read that summary, so let's see it's if I fresh can in remember your brain. anything. <laughs> yeah. I got to You know, oh. I loved, sorry, I yeah, loved go ahead. when one of the moments that I loved, I'll probably say a couple as they come back to me, but I loved when John and like Mormont had those like bonding moments cuz I just it's what I wanted for John. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I right. just, as a John enthusiast, I was like, someone cares about John. Someone values John type thing. It was some nice moments. Oh, uh, okay. I made a big deal about this then too, but it remains one of my favorite moments. When Tyrion yeah. kicks Jano Slint out. And he's just like, he's like, invites yeah. him to dinner and lays it all out, gets oh, him yeah. drunk and is like, 
get the fuck out of my face. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so, that moment is just so good. And mm-hmm. also when he's like doing the one, two, three, like I'm going to give everybody a fake oh, yeah? news and then see which one gets back. <laughs> oh, yeah. That mm-hmm. one's, Tyrion's just very entertaining most of the time. Yeah. Um. I did enjoy Theon getting his... No, I didn't enjoy it. Never mind. I wanted to, like, be like, oh, I really enjoyed when Theon finally got it. I was actually kind of, like, bummed. <laughs> yeah. I, like, wanted to give... Because I wanted... You know, I wanted I wanted to enjoy it, but I <laughs> didn't... You know, that too. But, like, I wanted, like, him as a character. I remember when we first met him, I was like, I want to see him have any character development. You know, like, I want to give him a chance. But it's like, it was sad because, you know, he died before I... He could do something for me to give him a chance, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um I think oh, um, I think definitely like Jaken Hagar doing his reveal. That was a cool moment that yeah. like oh that that also shocked me. Yeah. Uh I, think, I do remember that. Uh I really did- liked um when um like just some of like Oh, I love like all of Dan- the whole Danny's chapter in the House of the Undying. That like it's not a say, moment, yeah, yeah. but it's just like all the stuff for me to nerd about, and I loved it. No, that was really cool too. I was thinking about that as well. Um, and then I'm trying to like mentally go through all our protagonists. And, That's like, okay. See if, um, we can move on, and then if you think of something, we can always <laughs> come back to it. Yeah. Okay. Because I just because I I did enjoy Davos. Davos is Davos like, just being Davos. Oh yeah. wait, favorite moment, Peach. Peach. <laughs> yes. How can yes. we forget that the moment so of moments? Fun. That, that was, was that moment is the best. It is. I that don't know was... why, but it just like really is the best. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. Davos being Davos, Renly being Renly. <laughs> um, I also like. I don't know, just Catelyn and Jamie's banter was really funny. Oh, yeah. And just Catelyn always, that Catelyn scene. during that entire, right? Catelyn during yeah. that entire conversation being like, oh my god, I hate this man, but like, also I'd fuck him. Like, that whole vibe <laughs> well, was so no, funny. Well, no, she, she didn't say that. But she was she, like, he's good looking even now. <laughs> even though I hate him. <laughs> yeah. But like, that was, that was just so funny. Like, just seeing it from her perspective, but it's like this like rival's meat thing and it was funny yeah. and then she killed him which was funny <laughs> um, which was yeah. funny <laughs> our like, sense of humor no, no 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 like it was funny in the context of the scene like <laughs> you know she's like oh yeah yeah it was funny okay <laughs> all right least favorite moment i have oh, a i have a so answer many. for this my okay see there's since there's so many i think one that i that kind of stands out to me is when uh, Tyrion slaps Shay, and that moment I really hated because, like, I love Tyrion, but that like really took down my love for Tyrion a lot, and I don't yeah. want that. Yeah, because it's it, like it's like finding out your favorite author is a transphobe. It just like sucks the life out of you a little bit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, because it's, it's like you just it's like you you love this character so much, yeah. and then you just you just want them to be a good person as well. But it's like yeah. Uh, like, no, he's- and like I have a combination of like least favorite moment followed by a really good moment which was like when Arya is given those three death wishes mm-hmm. and she hears that terrible story from that guy yeah. that story least favorite but yeah. the dude like Arya being like kill him great yeah. moment <laughs> yeah like she went yeah, like the fact that she was like fully like you know she only had three wishes or mm-hmm. three death wishes. But that she used it on that. It was just so satisfying. Yeah. It was like yes, yeah. fuck that dude. It was really good. Um, yeah. And then I would also say like just anytime Stannis got any victories, which was a lot. <laughs> those just like it, it gives me so much anxiety when you he don't does like well. Stannis, right? I is... really don't like Stannis. Like he bugs me so <laughs> much because the issue is like, like with like okay, obviously every character is gonna like defend themselves and be like, oh, I'm doing this for the good of you know, my kids, or I'm doing this for the good of humanity, even though, like, you're probably not, you know? Like, no one's ever gonna be like, oh, I'm doing this for selfish reasons. But with Stannis, it's like, he genuinely, like, he's not like, oh, I'm doing 
bad things for the sake of a good cause. He just, he literally thinks he's doing good things for the sake of a good cause. And it just, it just, it just really irks me. He's not a very lot self-aware. <laughs> Yeah, it just, it really irks me. Um, So all of that. But I wouldn't say those, I, that's probably not my least favorite moments because there was things a lot worse. But I think <laughs> most of the ones you mentioned, like, the, yeah. the, most of the Arya stuff, once again. Um, Yeah, Arya, Sansa getting harassed, like all of those things, <laughs> no fun. Yeah. And, um, and just kind yeah. of brands, like, you know, when Melancholy. Was doing great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we covered that pretty well. Okay, so after this book, who is your favorite character and why? I don't know. Um, did I say John last time? I probably did. I honestly don't remember. I feel like you did. Okay. Um, who is Oh my gosh, I should have listened to that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. Homework for, um, for everyone. Listen to what she said before and compare it to now. Yeah, um, I don't know if I have a favorite character. Let me think of all the characters. Oh, mine, Davos. Hands down. Mm. Like, I don't know. Davos is just the best person ever and no one yeah, can ever he's like him. the perfect, he's the, he is, yeah. he is what a human should be. Yeah. He's just so good. He's just so good. Yeah. Though this world does not deserve him. Yeah. Oh, no, I think I said Ned. Maybe. Perhaps, I might have. Probably. Or maybe I maybe. think I said Ned I when he was know. still alive. I don't know. I do remember. I know when he was still alive, I was like, you know what? I think he's becoming my favorite character. And mm -hmm. then he died and I was like, <laughs> like I hate never the mind. world. <laughs> right? But I, like, yeah, I think. Who's my favorite character? I think. I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite character. I really enjoyed John. I really enjoyed Danny. Um. I think because of the whole Ned thing, I have a soft spot for Rob. But okay, yeah. I don't know. He's definitely but not Ned level. But we see him very but... little. In, like, we saw him in one or two chapters. And yeah. then he, like, went off to war. And we don't, like, we only exactly. hear about like, him. We never, yeah, we never really see him. Um, I think I also just, like, I think, I think, you know what? Um, I think Sansa is also kind of, I'm starting to warm up to Sansa. I think after the whole, like, her telling Cersei and that kind of leading to a lot of terrible things happening. Her I wasn't, saying what to Cersei? Like, when she went to Cersei, like, oh, my dad's, like, oh, we're leaving that, in the morning. Like, she's not the same Sansa she was. Yeah, she's had a lot exactly. of Exactly. So yeah. that's, like, I, I really, I think instead of answering who's my favorite character, I'm going to say what was my favorite f character arc. And it yep. sucks that Sansa had to, like, you know, r literally have her world ripped to shreds mm -hmm. in every single way. Um, and her dire wolf and her dad, like, oh. everything ripped to shreds. <laughs> it sucks that all of that had to happen. But I think, like, who she's becoming, like, I really, and like kind of what she overcame, yeah. like, I really, that arc was really satisfying just to see her become a better yeah, person. Yeah, she's got a lot of potential. Yeah, because, like, that really, like... I didn't want to blame her because, you know, she's like a 10 year old and, you know, to her, it was like her future was getting ripped. But like, just as a ignoring all of that, I was just like, fuck you, Sansa. But, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I'm kind of like, OK, I need to be more understanding of Sansa. Yeah, yeah. that's a good. I, I like that. Like the fact that you don't have a character, favorite character, but a favorite character arc. That's that's good. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a least favorite character? Oh, I would have said Theon up until like <laughs> 10 chapters okay, ago. Okay, hang on. Let me read the full question. Who is your least favorite character and how could they improve? So Ooh, okay. Um, maybe like Joffrey for now. <laughs> um, how could he improve? He can't. He can die. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> he can um, become unalive. I still hate Littlefinger. Like, his smugness Ooh. when Tyrion comes into town and is like, yeah. oh, this knife is so pretty, isn't it? And just like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. oh. He's I pretty awful, it. but like, I just, Joffrey just, I just, and I think also, the I think Joffrey, Joffrey is Joffrey... kind of like, nobody can like Joffrey, so it's like, I think last time we were like, we love to hate Joffrey. Or like, we did think like somebody love we love to, to hate, hate versus hate, hate to, to hate. Yeah. Or love, yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, all that. Um, um, yeah, I think with him, it's just like, 
I'm anticipating a lot more of him being awful, like with Sansa still being there, Marjorie coming in. So I think I'm just like in anticipation of that. I'm saying beforehand, oh, I'm going to hate him even more and I already yeah. hate him a lot. So I think I'm going to go with Joffrey. Okay. Uh, who do you hate to love? Ooh, okay, wait, which one's which again? What I do you mean? Which ones? Love- oh, yeah, yeah. It's like- the, I- But you love them, but you hate the fact yeah, yeah, that you love them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yes. Um- I remember last time I said Cersei for this, mm-hmm, but I think now, so. the last time we, now I'm kind of like infuriated at Cersei, which is her, <laughs> like, now I'm just like, oh, why are you like, you just, you have, now I'm like, and especially after like, I defended her so intensely. <laughs> you I took that like, so personally. You were like, she betrayed me. No, she did. I went above and beyond to advocate for her. And then she stabbed me in the back. I was like, how dare you? So you know what? No, she is no longer my sister. She is gone. I could, no, sorry, I'm yelling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it can't be Cersei anymore. Who do I hate to love? For me, even though it was like a one chapter interaction, but like Jamie in that last Catelyn chapter, oh, I oh. loved him, but I hated the fact that I loved him. Oh, I mean, I was just so true. entertained by him. <laughs> I think I think Catelyn also kind of felt like that. Catelyn was like, "Damn, like I'm I'm mad, but like, why are you being funny?" Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good answer. And okay. right now, I'm feeling like that I hate to hate Theon. Like I still hate him, but I hate it a little. Like I don't like the fact that I hate him still because mm. it like his life. I, mean, I don't feel as terribly towards him as I used to. Right, that's a good point. I don't know who do I hmm. Who do I hate to love? I hate to love. I think. I hate to love Tyrion almost. Because, like, I don't want to, like, be on his side. Because him succeeding is, like, you know? Because I'm, like, fully Everybody in else. Tyrion. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, like, fully in Tyrion's court, like, in terms of him as a person. But then, like, him. He's on him succeeding means the Lannisters yeah. succeed. But now he's so, kind of at the mercy of like his family. Yeah. And like he's he's almost in a similar situation to Sansa, basically. Wouldn't yeah. it be great if they like teamed up <laughs> and no. then we could like just love him full on? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I need that to happen. Cause it's like, man, he he did all of that. He made all of that happen. He sent Littlefinger. Like, he did everything. He did the chain. He did the wildfire. Like, he did everything. And he is credited for nothing. And on top of that, he's just insulted for existing. Yeah. And it's just like, he literally did that. And you have the audacity. I think you just just straight up love him. You don't even hate to love him. You just love him. (laughs) No, I do hate to love him because he's on the wrong side. Okay. All right. I don't want if we're to picking win. sides, then sure. <laughs> okay, who do I hate to hate? Um, I don't really know. I, I like my go-to answer would have been Theon, but now that's kind of now I kind of feel bad for Theon. Well, that's the point that you hate to hate him. Like you still hate him, but, or or do you just like there is no hate left anymore? I don't know. I can't tell. Okay. Okay. Moving on. So we're we're dwelling. <laughs> okay. What would you change about the book if you were the author? We gotta get pick up the pace. We've been okay. at this for too long. What would I change about the book if I could if I was the author? Um, I don't know. Just some of like the graphics. Graphics don't have to be uh, like the like how graphic. No, oh, the okay. graphics. Sorry, that was a bad description. <laughs> yeah, like just how graphic some of the stuff. I is. agree. I'm just like, I'm just I like, would also don't need to do this. One hundred percent. I would also change the some of the pacing like at the beginning it was like really slow like you know yeah. moving it along like this is book two we don't need like a whole setup yeah i think i, think I would also like i would love to introduce more povs so i would probably do that okay do you have any favorite quotes from this book Ooh, i do have favorite quotes but i don't have that noted um but you could probably usually- check our instagram I was just, I was literally just thinking, I was like, oh, the ones that I love, I usually just, like, use them as the quotes. Um, But I think just, um, yeah, let me go to the Instagram. (laughs) At Pop Culture Symposium, by the way, follow us on Instagram. (laughs) Um, I love, okay, 
Yeah, I love the stone is strong. The roots of the trees go deep, mm-hmm. and under the ground, kings of winter set their thrones. And it was, and just like that whole, like I think it was part of a paragraph where it was pretty much just like, you know, like nature is nature, winter fell will prevail. And I was like, yes, it will. And I just, I that gave me a lot of hope, just like in general beyond the book. I yeah. was like, I was like, things can rejuvenate, right? This is fine. Okay, mine. Oh, I love this. Is like there's a bunch, but this is like top tier. It oh, is yeah? right around that peach moment. <gasps> uh, it's about Stannis. I am mm-hmm. not without mercy, thundered he who was notoriously without mercy. <laughs> just like, it's, right. so, it's mm-hmm. just so funny. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I love some of the like, like, those are like, like, the, like, obviously there's like different categories of quotes, like, I like I love like the one that I named I would say is like more like motivational more inspirational, type stuff yeah. and, like it's inspirational. <laughs> I love those quotes, but I also just like some of um George R's descriptions of like like some of his like godswood descriptions or just like some of those like ooh like there was the sky and there was like a raven in the sky and the sky was orange like <laughs> I, I'm combining yeah. different circumstances but like yeah. just some of the ways he describes things I'm like ooh I love that so yeah yep. some of those and then also some of the inspirational ones um Yeah, I tend to, like, cling to the funny ones because it's, like, <laughs> so rare. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Can't I wait, think that's good. Can't wait, who said this? A day will come when you think yourself safe and happy and suddenly your joy mm. will turn to ashes in your mouth and you'll know the debt is paid. Uh, Tyrion said that to Cersei when Cersei <gasps> uh, captured Aliaya. Oh, yes, yes. And he Ooh. went, like, real intense with it. Like, he was like, I don't even mean this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because he was like, I'm right. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. I got you. Okay. Uh, is there any, like, random detail that you'll never forget? I think it's the peach. I think we can agree and uh-huh. move on. <laughs> Which yeah. character do you relate to the most? I relate to... <laughs> John? I know you said that mm. several times. I think I related more to him in book one. Okay. Like this book, he, he was doing like outdoorsy shit. I'm not, uh, you yeah. know. And he's kind of, he's, that. yeah, he's less I'm of like body. the same, like, that's true. He's I related to like Samuel same. Tarly. Who's that? Oh, Sam! Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Sam. Yeah. I got you. Well, I got he's you. like uh, down in the library mm. and he's like, oh, do I have to go? Oh, I'm uh, wild, gross. Right. Yes, I can um, see that. I think I related a lot to Sansa, mm-hmm. um, just in like multiple ways. But I think just that, like, just like, um, kind of what you think you know falling apart. Because you know, I like Sansa. <laughs> I spent a large period per- portion of my life like trying to like adhere to like what everyone wanted me to do and like all that and then just like that recent like Sansa's growth of like okay there's no like right answer so I can't always be out here trying to find the right thing to do and like go forward with that I just feel like I think that's also why like I get a little bit salty at Sansa when she messes up because I'm kind of like is this indicative (laughs) of me you know so I think I think I relate to Sansa a lot yeah okay um, if you had to trade places with a character, who would you want it to be? Literally none of them. I know. That is honestly <laughs> the only answer. Maybe, like, one of the free folk. You know? Because they're okay, a little bit yeah, freer. Yeah. Like, maybe, like, a greet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I'm thinking, like, maybe, like, some of the people, like, um, like, I don't know, like, someone in Karth or, like, someone, like, I don't know. Those are such snobs. <laughs> I, that's true but like also some of them live pretty lavish li- maybe like right. Illyrio I want to be Illyrio was Illyrio even in this book he's like mentioned yeah but like I it, hey it's okay I want to be one of those you can like, be rich- Zaro's on Doxos he's richer than Illyrio yeah sure I'll okay. be, I'll be him <laughs> alright if you could grant one character immunity in this series who would it be Sansa <gasps> I'm gonna say Sansa now just cause like she's honestly like Arya has at least Gendry and Hot Pie. Sansa has no one. 
That's fair. She has what's his name, Dantos, but like mm. that's worse than having no one on Yeah, most. he just he just wants to like have sex with her. Like that's essentially Ugh. what it yeah. is. Um I would say Catelyn is really going through it. So emotionally just, but, so immunity would is like you want her to outlive all her children is that really it, what you no, want for her like, I, I just <laughs> but i feel bad for her so like i want to give her something but i guess like emotionally that, that would be the worse worst thing for her, for her. <laughs> okay fine whatever i want to give her emotional immunity. you should give one of her kids immunity so that she feels better about it oh <laughs> <sighs> I, okay, yeah. I'm not going to dictate what you say. But. No, I'm giving her emotional immunity. That's what I'm giving her. What does that mean? I'm giving her, like, her, like, she's, like, she'll, like, happiness. I'm giving her happiness. Okay, but the question is, if you I don't could care. guarantee her- that, okay, fine, that's your emotional immunity question. Who do answered. I give physical immunity to? Yeah, oh, like, fine. if you could save one person from being killed, who would it be? <sighs> um... John. Okay. Yeah. That's understandable. I, I, yeah, I really don't want John to die. (laughs) But you want Rob to die? I was thinking Rob, but then I was like, (laughs) I don't think Rob will die, so he doesn't need the immunity. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. John's more in danger. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Moving on to predictions for book three, kind of. Um, what do you want to see in book three? Like, not like, actually predictions but like what do you want from book three happiness okay in the form of like reunion or yes yes right like you know like you know i want everybody to return to winterfell rebuild and just like screw the rest of the world exactly (laughs) Arya's, you know hopefully making her way to river run um maybe like a aria catlin moment would be so nice Mm -hmm. um probably too much to hope for maybe like a rob and like maybe like a maybe like a rickon sees someone he knows moment which i feel like that's probably the least likely of all my predictions just with where this book is going (laughs) maybe like i also want to see just like i don't know like i want i want more care like you know sansa kind of had that like growth and like obviously a lot of the characters like going through growth and like having terrible things happen to them but i just like i don't know i just want like more characters to just kind of be like you know what fuck you you know okay (laughs) yeah just like and i just like i just you know like we're back it's september we're back in university now i need some joy i just (laughs) i really need like some of these chapters need to revive my hope instead of destroying my hope (sighs) am i that's too much to hope for okay good to know (laughs) i just like you know because i'm gonna be like dead after the weeks and then when we record on (laughs) saturdays like i just need something like give me something well there's oh i can't say anything but i will i think i've told you already but this the third book is my favorite book and it tends to be a lot of people's favorite books book a lot of people's favorite book um so that's something yeah Not but like joy, also but don't something. be like don't like expect too much because like okay. then you'll be disappointed um right okay i mean that's okay i think also okay joy but then also i think just like i want characters to stick together because i feel like everybody's kind of leaving everybody and i just need like partnerships and alliances that people aren't gonna betray okay that I can that that's a good I got it. Okay. Which new character POVs do you want? <gasps> All of them. I want everyone to have a <laughs> <laughs> No, but like name three for okay. let's say. Let's give um I want Marcella so that we can know what's going on at Dorn. Dorn, yeah, that makes sense. Um I kinda want Melisandra. That would be cool. I feel like that would be really cool. To, like, actually I... be in her head and be like, what's mm-hmm. going on? <laughs> and then also, I, I've, huh. Rob. I want Rob. Okay. <laughs> I think I've been yeah. saying Rob for quite a You've been a hoping while. for that for a while, yeah. So long. Ever since Ned died, I think I was like, okay, let's get Rob in here. 
Sub it okay. out. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Um, so not POVs necessarily, but which characters do you want to learn more about in book three? All of them? Um, but like, do like, you have somebody in mind? Maybe like... <gasps> Ooh. Um, what's his face? Um, the, the spider? Varys. <laughs> the spider. <laughs> um, sure. Varys and then kind of Littlefinger, but not. I just want to know like what goes on in his head without actually going in his head because that'll make yeah. me want to punch him. You, you want know? him to have like a really long soliloquy where <laughs> we just like get a little glimpse. Yes. Yeah, I want him to be like, this is why I'm a villain. This is my villain origin story. I mean, we know, but like, I just want a little bit more, you know? Okay, yeah. So wait, so you said little figure and who was the other person? I don't remember. You just said this. Oh, Varys. Varys, yes. Um, No one else? Tywin. Oh, yeah. Well, I won't say much, but I'll say you'll, you're getting some of what you want. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's get into like what it's we're like an hour into this. Oh my god. <laughs> That's okay. We were gonna make this a quick episode. That's okay. It doesn't have to be quick. Okay. I'm gonna read question series from people and it's in random order. We're just gonna go. Okay. <gasps> I'm so excited. Oh. Okay. So This is my favorite part. Um from Feeler on Discord, F E H L E R. Hello, enjoying the podcast. A question for Harmouth for when Clash of King- Kings ends. What new POV characters does Hershey want to read in book three? We just answered that. Uh, and so Clash of King- Kings gave us Davos on- and Theon and Mason Maester Cresson, which we're doing <laughs> that <one. laughs> Yeah. And the question that we haven't answered so far is, will there be a gratuitous death in a prologue again? <laughs> Because oh, remember, like the very that's first happened one, both it, times. Yeah. Honestly, exactly. probably, probably, I think so. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and it'll fair. be like a new POV once again, continuing the trend, and then they'll die. But it'll be like a small character where we're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, um, yeah, okay. So the next one is an email from Brian. Wait, there was sorry, like a- I just had a. Th- I'm sorry, I just had a thought. Sorry. What? I have a lot of thoughts. But Davos, is Davos our only, like, like, I know obviously Davos is, like, directly under Stannis and he has, like, a big position. But is Davos kind of, like, our only, like, non, like, non-royal slash? Yes. Right? I just, I mm-hmm. just made that connection down. Okay, yeah. now I love Davos even more. <laughs> but yeah, he's, like, our only, like, non, Non-nobility, like, no- yeah. Yeah. Like, he's, yeah. like, now a part of the nobility, but he didn't start off there. He's yeah. a smuggler, yeah. That's cool. Okay, next up, we have an email from Brian. There, it was, like, a longer email, but I think in transferring all the information onto my sheet here, I just kept the questions. So the questions are, who killed John Aaron? Oh, my Lord. Just give um, me one. I don't even I think he, last time you ended on Varys or something. Do, are you still sticking with that? I think so. I think that kind of. No, 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 no. I remember I was like, um, uh, Lysa. Oh, Lysa. yeah. You kind of did. Okay. Okay. Lysa. Yeah. Who tried to kill Bran? Robert. King Robert. Okay. Who killed Sir Hugh? Who's that? Okay, so this is... <laughs> Sir Hugh was John Aaron's squire, and he participated in the Hand's tourney, and, well, technically who killed it is is the mountain. They were, like, jousting. Yeah. And then he ended up dying because his gorget was, like, all loose or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, like, who planned that? Um, I have no idea. I don't even remember who this man is. Maybe, like, um, I'm not sure, because who- Honestly, I've read all the books, and I still don't really know. <laughs> so... Really? Okay. <laughs> like, I or maybe I don't remember. Maybe he was just clumsy. Like, maybe, you know? Like maybe <laughs> It was a that's... coincidence? Just, like, a highly convenient coincidence? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, what's Pycelle up to? 
as you're saying these names, I need a second to remember who they are. Pycelle's I saw the Grand Maester or no longer Grand Maester. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know he where like, he stands. Isn't he in the dungeons now? Remember, like, Tyrion agreed to let him out, but he was like, I'm not going to have him on my council. Oh, okay. Um, He's probably just, like, vibing. Okay. But, like, I, I, whose side is he on, I think, is what well, the question probably is. Not, probably not Tyrion's. I mean... Yeah, when he, Tyrion was current confronting, and he was like, "I did it all for Lannister." Mm-hmm. So, do you think you still buy that? But like, now it's Lannister minus Tyrion. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I think it was always Lannister minus Tyrion. So okay, <laughs> so I don't think. But he might also be salty of like, oh, no one you know helped me. But at the same time, like if the Lannisters well, were still Cersei in power, did like- demand that he be released oh okay yeah and okay, that yeah, was yeah Tyrion was like i'll let her have this so that she will like let me have this other thing right okay yeah so i think he'll still kind of be on like he'll just be trying to um what's it called when you try to like get someone on your side he'll be like buttering up to tywin i think okay all right yeah Okay, uh, Brian continues. I also thought it would be good to go over some basic background info. Like, does Harmouth know what are the Seven Kingdoms? The major houses and their sigils? And just how far has Danny traveled in Essos? So do you know what the Seven Kingdoms are? I have no idea. Okay, this is, is it, actually... Is the Seven like- Kingdoms are not even what, like... They're, they have changed historically. Like, okay. it, they used to be seven kingdoms, right. but now I don't think all the kingdoms exist because I, I think it was, like, North Riverlands, Iron Islands. Okay. Or no, it was, like, Iron Islands and Riverlands were one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the West uh, and what's down there? The Reach... And Dorne, how many is that? So North, Riverlands and Iron Islands, the Westerlands, the Reach, Dorne, uh, Stormlands, that's seven. There was one more. Which one are we missing? That's just six. Yeah, so there's one more. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you just said seven. I was clarifying. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I I meant like there's seven in total. (laughs) Let me Google this. this you is a- said there's a west. Is there an east? That's the Stormlands. Like, oh. right now, there are the Crownlands, but they didn't exist in the original Seven Kingdoms. Okay. Okay. Uh, why does the New York Times have an article on this? Y'all don't got anything else to worry about? <laughs> Um, sorry. <laughs> there goes the New York Times sponsorship. Oh, oh, yes, there is an East. The Vale, of course. Duh. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> totally forgot about that. Mm-hmm. So there's the seven. Uh, the major houses. So it's, why don't you list some of them for me and I'll fill you in and tell me what their sigil is. Oh my god. I don't Just know any of the go ahead. Winterfell? No, that's not a house. Um, I, then Stark. What, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Stark. And there's house Stark. a dire wolf. <laughs> yeah. Um, then there's um, House Baratheon. Um, and they have the stag. Mm-hmm. Then there's... Um, well, now there's, like, House Baratheon 2.0, which is, like, Stannis, and his is, like, the heart. Yeah. Like the stag, like, the mm-hmm. burning heart or whatever. And then um, um, we have the Martells, which is, like, the sun Sun sp- with, like, a spear through it? Yes, yeah. the sun spear or whatever. Yeah. Um, then we have the ones who I always confuse the Martells with. Um, the Tyrells, um, they're, <laughs> also like... Also in the South, yeah. Yes, uh, I do not remember their sigil, like, at all. Um, I know, uh, it's I a rose. Was, I was gonna say, there's King of Flat or Knight of Flowers, is it related? Okay, rose. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. pretty! Okay, there's that, <laughs> sorry. Then there's, um, um, the eerie people. Dale, House yeah. Aaron. Aaron? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, okay, Aaron. I have no idea what theirs is. Is it just like their mountain or whatever? It's a falcon. Oh, that's weird. 
No, wait. It's because like they're up in the mountains. It's it's a falcon, right? That's a probably. I guess. <laughs> It's in the book. I'm pretty sure it's a falcon. Like, it's a bird okay, of some cool. kind. Sounds but I good. might have, like, the exact type. Because they're, like, words are as high as honor because they're, like, up in the mountains. And they. Right. Yes, yes. And then there's. They make people the, fly. Right. And then there's the Lion of Lannister. Uh, moon and Falcon. So it's got a moon okay. and a falcon. Cool. Then we have yeah. Lion of Lannister. Um, And I think that's where. River Run. Oh. The Tully's. Oh, yes, yes. Wait, River Run, Tully's. River Run, the Tully's, Tully's are based in River Run. Oh, yes, but what's... I don't remember their sigil. Is it just a river? <laughs> uh, no, it's a trout. It's it's a fish, so I'm not going to double check which fish. Oh, like the black fish or whatever. The black fish is a person. I know, but I'm but saying that's where his there's the connection. Yeah. Yes, I, I know that the black fish is a person. Uh... And I was going to ask you, where is he? I like came Where's across his name and I forgot the like black where fish? is he? Yeah. Probably out with the uh, Rob. Okay, that's what I thought, but I was like did he come back? Like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's a silver trout is like it's a trout. The okay. R- Tully's sigil. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. I did we get to all those questions? Oh, how far has Daddy traveled in Essos? What's Do you Esso? have a map? What's Essos? Oh, Esso. So Westeros is the continent with the seven kingdoms, and Essos is the other continent, which is east of Westeros. Never eat. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and Essos has like everything else is on Essos, basically. <laughs> like, is there's there any the, other? Like, yeah, there's the Summer Islands and probably something else, which I don't remember right now. But okay, yeah. Like Bravos, Pentos, Carth, all of that stuff over in Essos, but it's like a really large, large continent. And Danny's probably like, okay, on the count, like if well, from one end to the other end, she would, I would say she's like 80% over, <laughs> okay. far away from Westeros. But actually, so, we don't really know how far the continent extends. But it's, yeah. it's far, okay? Okay. Do you, there, do you map... know how far the continent extends? Not 100%. Like, I have okay. a sense. I think, like, a shy is kind of, like, on the very end of it. And yeah. Karth is not as far east as a shy. Okay. But it's farther east than Valeria. Okay. Right. So for... Okay, yes. There's got to be a map. <laughs> I mean, there is a map. I know that for a fact. Yeah. But let's see here. Okay. So this is the map of the known world. This is Westeros mm. right here. Okay. Right? Like, um, this is the north. And King's Landing's like right around there. No, mm-hmm. right around here, actually. Yeah. And this is like Dorne, Reach, Vale, all of that. Yeah. So here, like at the top there is Bravos mm-hmm. and like Pentos and the other free cities are like around here. Yeah. This is uh, Valeria, like where the Targaryens originally came from. Mm-hmm. This is Slaver's Bay and Karth is like right here. Oh. Yeah. And then Ashai is like here. <gasps> Damn. So, like, so this is Karth. Yeah. And so, like, pretty much the... In- Damn. Okay, so I guess she's never getting to a shy if they're going back to Pentos to go see Illyrio. Yeah, Pentos is this way. It's, like, here. <laughs> so... Damn. So we're never gonna see a shy. But they keep talking about a shy. So then, like, yeah. you know? I don't know. That's so annoying. Know. What are they doing? <laughs> is Danny just going to keep traveling for the next three books and then in the final book she finally gets to Westeros? Like, what's going on? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> or is it like she's going to pull a Tyrion where she suddenly becomes the main character so we actually see more from her and her travels become less like, oh, it's going to take her a book to get to the city, you know? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... In short, I knew nothing, but now we've gotten a <laughs> now history you have a lesson. Sense. Now we yeah. have a geography lesson. <laughs> okay. Wait, let All me right. just like note that down. Give me a solid second. Moving on. 
So next up, we have a series of emails from Mots. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mots. And I've kind of amalgamated them. Like, it's not, yeah, it, it's not clear where, like, one begins and one ends. I just put it all together. Okay. So, uh, hello there. This email is probably way too, oh, by the way, I mostly just copy and paste it because there's, like, really no way to capture Mots's energy than rather than, like, quoting him directly. So I'm going nice. to do that. <laughs> nice. Hello there. This email is probably way too late to be in the end of book episode, but it's also really long, so that's fine. I've been <laughs> experiencing a bit of a podcast slump recently, and I have fallen behind. By that, I mean podcasts in general, not this particular podcast. I guess that's what I get for listening to about 10 different podcasts that all upload weekly. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot believe that y'all are already at the end of book two. How did this happen? Where did time go? <laughs> Here are a few brief thoughts on the last few episodes that I missed. Number one, I love the Theon slander as per usual <laughs> until it was no longer slander. I mean, poor Theon. <laughs> <laughs> I am so here for the Podrick Payne love. He's so pure and I adore him. <laughs> Number three, I hate the older male character's weirdly sexual interest in Sansa in this book, by which I mean Sandra Clegane and Sir Dantos Hollard specifically. It's similar to Jorah's with D Danny, which I'm pretty sure I've literally brought up and complained about in a previous email. Gross. <laughs> Gross indeed. Yes. Number four. I'm loving the Cersei slander in these last few episodes. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. It just... There's all there's a lot of slander in our podcast, I'm realizing. We're yeah, we're definitely not like an uplifting positive. I mean like we are, I would say, but not like of these characters. Um, yeah. Number five. In the episode for the last Daenerys chapter, chapter 63, I believe, y'all were talking about Daenerys' dragon's eggs, and Nav made a Nav and I made a Chekhov's dragon's eggs joke at pretty much the exact same time, and it made my day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, it was low-hanging fruit. I couldn't resist. Yeah. Um, number six. I love listening to Harmouth getting increasingly paranoid and worried as we get more and more Sansa chapters towards the end of this book. <laughs> number seven. I low-key love the phrase. I know they're terrible, but I can't help it. I love whenever we meet a new one. They always have their own agenda, which usually has to do with how far down the line of succession they are. Big Walder and Little Walder keep going on about how they're both like 86th and 87th in line or whatever. And then you have the one Frey who was talking to Arya about how he's supposed to marry a princess that neither of them realized was actually Arya herself. They give, they kind of give off NPC vibes to me. You know what NPC is, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're just living their life as main characters in their own little story, a story they will tell you every time without fail as the rest of Westeros is falling apart around them. House Frey spinoff? Oh my god! <laughs> Literally. Um, number eight. I 100% buy Harmut's theory about Renly's peach being a horcrux. No! <laughs> I forgot that I said that. That's funny. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> Number nine. It's so good to have your intro outro, mu outro music back in my life. I really missed it. Oh, Aww. yeah. I'm hoping book three will bring more guests or more of the same guests because they're awesome and I cannot freaking wait to hear you talk about it. I love this podcast and it's always such a good time hearing y'all talk about one of my favorite book series. Thank you for this wonderful show. I really appreciate y'all and it's so good to be back listening. Sorry about the lengthy email. I hope you have a fantastic day. Sincerely, Mots. Mots, we love getting your emails and we're so glad you like the podcast and yeah. we love you too. Thank you so much. That was such an entertaining email. Hang on. I love it. I'm Hang on. P.S. <laughs> Random question, not at all related to the rest of the email. Which character or characters that you've met so far, either from the main series or the Hedge Knight, do you think you'd get along with the best? I like to think that I'd get along with Tyrion or Sam from the main series, and probably Darian Targaryen from the Hedge Knight, or maybe Baylor Breakspear before he died, that is. Who would we get along with? We talked about who we relate to the most. Um, Baylor, definitely. We... I, like, I, yeah. 
Um, except I would, would definitely get along with Sam too. Like <laughs> I, I relate to him, and I would get along with him. Yeah, who would I get along with? I feel like I would also get along with Arya probably. Yeah, I think I think I would get along with Gendry. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that honestly. Yeah, um, he's got the like I got. I have zero fucks left to give. A little bit of that energy <laughs> that you're hoping yeah. for more in the next book. <laughs> Yeah. Like, he's just, you know, living life, doing what he can. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I think he just has, like, an honesty that I would gravitate towards where, like, he just, he like you said, he doesn't give fucks. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not, like, trying to be someone he's not. He's kind of just making the most of what he's got. And, like. I would get along with Brienne. Uh, sorry, I was going to say Brian, which is what <laughs> what the narrator says. But oh, Brienne. Oh, gross. Yeah, Brienne. Wait, Brienne? Brienne. 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 What? Brienne. Brienne. Yeah. My brain has short circuited. <laughs> it's like okay. just remembering all the terrible mispronunciations have made the actual pronunciations leap out of my head. That's funny. Yeah. Um, I think um Arya and Brienne would get along really well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah, except for... Arya cares like I don't know. I don't, I don't, like, we don't really know exactly what's going on inside Brienne's head, but mm-hmm. Arya is like Brienne, two, like 2.0, but like 2.0, 2.0, but like a little more intense. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know. No, I know what you mean. She Ar- does Arya's- the fighty fight thing, but she also like doesn't do the. She's more of a. Like, Brienne's very shy, doesn't, like, really speak up. Arya's gonna tell you what she thinks, and she's gonna tell you now. Like Definitely, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay. It's okay. We'll come back if something else occurs to us. I feel like I would, like, get along with, like, Renly, which is weird, but I think I would. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would... I would get along with Renly generally but like we wouldn't be bffs yeah i get that okay question two uh who are some of your favorite minor characters in this series so far feel free to interpret minor however you wish but maybe not like pov characters and stuff minor character podrick Payne, brienne of tarth uh gendry you got any? <laughs> I Gendry, Gendry is definitely up there for me. Oh, um, Mira, Mira, like Mazdur? No, that's Miri. Oh. Mira. Uh, oh, like Jojen and Mira. Yeah. What is what's her last name? It starts with an H, right? Reed. No. Oh, Mira Reed. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking Howland Reed. Like yeah, Howland H. Reed. <laughs> that's yeah. Her um. Yeah, 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 Mira. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Mira. Um, Osha. Yeah. Asha. Oh my God. I, oh, mm-hmm. how did I not talk about Asha being my favorite uh-huh. character? Yes, uh-huh. Davos and Asha. They can like have their own spinoff series, and I would be uh-huh. happy as can be. <laughs> that would be the mm-hmm. best series. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good. That's a good combo. Okay. I did we? I'm pr- I'm sure I missed some people, but I can't remember right now. I think so. that's a good. Good summation. Yeah. Uh, do, do. To answer my own question for those wondering, one of my favorite minor characters is Hallis Mullen. I just love his tendency to state the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever he comes up, it just makes me smile. Another example, not technically one character, but still, the Fossaways. Whenever we meet them, all hear the lords of the apple pun. The green Fossaways, the red Fossaways, all of them. <laughs> nah, yeah. <laughs> Question three. What are some of the moments that have shocked you the most so far? And I think we discussed this in yeah. a lot of length. So I think so, yeah. We'll go to Matz's answer, which is uh, my answer to this may be a little underwhelming. I watched the show before I read the books and knew most of the twists before even watching. So Ned and Renly's death, sadly, didn't really come as a surprise. Same with a lot of others, like Viserys' golden crown, Tyrion using wildfire to defend King's Landing, or Maester Aemon being revealed as a Targaryen. Though the last one still give me, gives me chills, both wa- watching and reading. 
So it's an interesting moment. Um, However, there is a moment so earth shattering that my entire perception of this series took a huge shift and that changed the series for me forever. The moment I'm talking about is, of course, the time in book one when a Blackwood and a Bracken agreed on something. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that's funny. I I had read this email, but I forgot where this is going. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I was like, damn. Like, and I'm like trying to think back. Like, what was so, you know? That's funny. Yeah. Mm. But it's, it's truly earth shattering. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Question four. Any predictions for how many episodes it will take for Nub to get used to saying a storm of swords instead of a clash of kings at the beginning of each episode? I don't actually have any predictions personally, so Mm -hmm. lots, lots of episodes. That's my guess. I'm going to say, I think especially since now we'll be now um, we'll be recording less often, it'll take even Mm -hmm. longer. Um, Oh, Mats, I want to take you up on this challenge and be like, I'm not gonna say it wrong, but I mm-hmm. watch me do it the first time. It's it's. I, Let's go. And with also, like it's like seven. it's a lot of like I'm gonna mess up the s's. We know we ha- I have trouble with s's, and That's there's okay. a w which I also have trouble with the w's and the v's. Yep. Words be hard. Nah. Yeah, I'm gonna a storm guess of seven. swords. I'm gonna guess seven, seven episodes. That's, That's my your guess. favorite number. Yes. Okay. Then another email. Sorry, I'm making it like oh, another email. And it's, I'm just kidding. This is actually all of these emails are great. This next one is a theory. So you got your thinking brain on. I hope so. Okay. So here's a hundred percent serious theory about the murder of John Aaron. Oh. At one point in Arya 7 of book 2, I think, Arya overhears a rumor that Lord Tywin is planning on marrying Lysa Aaron. However, what if that is not just a ridiculous rumor, but the actual truth? In Eddard 1 of A Game of Thrones, I believe we learned that Robert had hoped to foster Lysa's son, who, inconveniently enough, is also named Robert, with Tywin, but that she had refused but again, what if the reason that she refused was that she knew that she would soon be marrying him and it wouldn't really matter? Is following me so far? Wait, she'd be marrying the dude. Tywin. Who... Wait, she'd be marrying Tywin? Yeah, that's the rumor. Okay. Oh, are you over here? Is the rumor that Tywin is planning on marrying Lysa? Wait, when was this? I don't remember this rumor. This was like when she's in Heron Hall and she hears a bunch of rumors. Okay. Oh, and we were like, oh, haha, people just talking, small folk. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So Mats is saying, what if it's okay, not no, no, a no. Yeah, rumor I get it. I get it. Yes, and yes, it's yeah. true? And that the reason Liza didn't want to foster Robert with Tywin is because it didn't matter anyway, because they would be marrying soon. Oh. So later in book one, Liza accuses Tyrion of killing Jon Arryn and the attempt on Bran's life. And we, of course, assume that erratic erratic behavior in this scene is a result of her grief and fear. But what if it's all an act? What if that this is a plan cleverly conducted by Liza and Tywin to help Tywin huh. get rid of the son that he never wanted. I mean, it would have worked if it hadn't been for Bronn. Damn. So, in short, what if Lysa and Tywin have been working together <gasps> this entire time? Holy and was shit. this why John Heron, Aaron had to die? Did he know about this alliance? Was he the only thing standing between them? Damn. <laughs> That is so intricate. I I applaud your mind, but I feel like I don't know if I cuz I feel like it's still like oh like her 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 resistance to, you know, her son being fostered with Tywin. I feel like that's like that step is like too far to go to be like, oh, like I don't want this. You know, like I feel like even with their plan If they were allied, she wouldn't say it. Like she could like I just feel like that's the part that throws me off for the theory okay. being true. Like, just the okay. whole, like, oh, like, oh, I'm doing this to not appear suspicious, like, type thing. Okay. All right. Well, Mots continues. Hopefully we find the answer to this question soon, as it's been there pretty much the entire series so far. Yeah. For now, though, I totally ship it. <laughs> ah, 
that's funny. Thank you for I... dealing with my bullshit. I really appreciate y'all. <laughs> Yeah, there is no bullshit. That's that's a really cool theory. Um, yeah, yeah. I just feel so, like you don't think Lysa don't and Tywin think are allied, but you do think no. that Lysa killed John yeah, Aaron. Why I did do. you think that again? I just, you know, she was unhappy with her marriage. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, she doesn't want to get remarried, and like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not judging her for it, but like, I feel like there's part of that. Like, she was like. I don't want to marry this man, and like she right. almost there's the no power divorce in this world, so she was like, "Yeah, you got to go." Yeah, and I think there was another reason, but I can't place it right now. But as of right now, I think that was part of why I'd said her, and I think it was also that would be a shock. And I think just with how much this question has been, um, like just brought, brought up, up so yeah. many times, it's got to be something shocking. Like there's, you know, it can't just be like oh, Cersei was lying. She did actually do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, Cersei, like, straight up says to Tyrion, like, no, exactly. I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah she said it a million she, times. And she, at but... that point, doesn't, it seems she doesn't have any reason to lie, so. Yeah. No, but it would be a very boring closure of that question if it turned out Cersei was like, just kidding, I just wanted to mess with you, you know? Like, that would be a very boring answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on to... Uh, thoughts from another listener. So Leah on Discord had uh, a few questions. So if Danny arrived to Westeros next book, what would be a good alliance for her? Ooh. I'm like trying to go through in my head. Um... Like, reminder, she doesn't like the Starks or the Lannisters and the Brathians because, like, they were the powers yeah, yeah. that overthrew her family. Yeah. So I guess we really just have, like, the Greyjoys and then, like, the Mance Raider. Um, Mance Raider? Like, or, uh, Beyond the, the Wall? Or do you, yeah. are you talking about... Yeah. Okay. The dude Beyond the Wall. Yeah. Um, well, there's the Tyrells. Oh, yes, yes. Aren't and the they... Martells... But aren't and the they... Aaron's? Well, no, Aaron's. She also doesn't like. Yeah, but aren't those people kind of with the Lannisters? the Lannisters currently? But yeah. I guess they aren't like. I guess like especially we know like Dorne hasn't actually like sent their people. They're just kind of like mm-hmm. in theory alliance. Yeah. And um, but I w- I guess I was just thinking because you know like when the Targaryens did their whole thing like the Dornish were like the last to like like. They like they were like Bow down, unbroken yeah. or whatever, right? So I just unbound, unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Yeah. So I guess like that's kind of what's throwing me off for that. I would say I I don't know. Part of me like I feel like the whole magic vibe is I like I don't know. I for some reason I see Danny partnering with like Mance Raider for some reason. Okay. Like I just see that happening. That would be cool. Ice and fire but I guess aligned. The question, yeah, exactly. But I guess the question is what would be a like advantageous alliance for her? Like, I just, yeah. that's what I see happening. I think in terms of what would be useful is I think, um, I think it would be good. I almost think, like, aligning with Rob would actually be good. Because I think, like, you know, like, Tar- like the Targaryens were, like, the old dynasty or whatever, and then, like, Winterfell, like, the King of the North, that was part of, like, the olden days. So I think they kind of have those similar, like, wanting to go back to the past type thing. Like, I feel like, like... Right, but, like, Rob wants to go back to the past before the Targaryens when the North was, like, its own kingdom. Yeah, but I feel like they could still, like, work out... Yeah, and the daddy would need to get over her, like, hatred of the Starks. (laughs) There's a... Yeah, but I'm just saying I think that would be the most helpful, and I think, you know, helpful also involves who's not going to betray her also. So I think just in terms of all of those factors, I think... I don't think it would ever happen, but if it did... I think it would be, like, a good way to band together. And then, you know, like, Danny and dragons, like, she understands magic as a thing, so it would also be good for the Starks and, like, them trying to help the wall. You know, like, I think overall mm-hmm. for thriving, I think it would be really good if they did band together. Yeah, I mean, we want the Starks to win and we want Daddy to win, so. Yeah, okay, 
So far, two major houses have lost their ancestral homes, the Starks and the Targaryens. That's something else they could bond over. Will there be more houses that lose their homes? The Lannisters might lose theirs because they're very focused on King's Landing right now. So someone mm-hmm. could easily swoop in and take um, Casterly Rock. So Makes sense. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, I'm getting sleepy. Uh, okay, focus. Um, last episode, you discussed how John knows about Lady's demise, which I'm pretty sure was through one of the letters you received from Winterfell, which would make sense. I just don't remember it. Uh, which leads me to ask, why do you think Maester Aemon didn't communicate with Danny or Viserys? Well, I personally think it's like his whole, like, I'm no longer a Targaryen. I gave up my name thing. What What about you? What do you think? Oh, oh, I get, I, for a second I was so lost. Oh, you're saying like, oh, they could communicate, they can communicate by letter. Why didn't he communicate by letter? Um, yeah, I think that feels like the most logical thing to me, right? Because he, like, didn't he, when, when we learned that, he had that whole thing of like, I've experienced so many of my family members dying. Mm-hmm. So, and I feel like, you know, he didn't get involved then, so why would he get involved yeah. now? Like, there's just... Yeah, that makes no... sense to me. Yeah. Um. So, not a question, but I would like to see Harmouth trying to get in the shoes of the free folk. So, imagine that the land where you live is certain suddenly infested with zombies, and the Night's Watch invades your territory and almost with almost all their men. Like, why are they, they being the free folk, the bad people? So, I guess my question would be... What would Harmut do in the situation if she was a man's like figure? Like with the If you were queen beyond the wall, what would you do? What would I do? Right. Cause there's the There's the freaking zombies. Mm-hmm. Like the um the others, I guess. I always forget which word is for which. So the others, there's the others. And then there's the um the people at the wall trying to I don't know I feel like to me I'm just not like a like I'm not like a war gal um (laughs) like I don't think I don't think anyone's a war girly but I think I'm like super strongly opposed to being I've started calling everything blank girly so yeah just gonna have to deal with it but so I think where I would go I think I would try to like kind of um like work with the people at the wall and like try to make them see that like my lifestyle is just as like I mean we've like, been inside the minds of the people at the wall are they receptive to talks with the wildlings I I'm not saying it would work but I'm saying that's what I would try to do Okay um so I would like I think that would definitely be like my first approach and I would try to like just be like hey like if we can let's put collab. aside our differences let's collab on this record <laughs> like let's collab um and i think if that wasn't effective um i don't know like then i i don't know what i would do i think i would just fall apart but i think what would be i think like that would definitely be my first thing but then I guess, like, eventually it might have to be, like, a manse-type approach, where it's like, well, if I can't join you, I might have to fight you, because, like, you know, this is... Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, it's like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to leave your home. Like, you, you'd want to find a way to kind of, like, um, like, not have the zombies affecting you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So at the same time, it's like, yeah, I could like go beyond the wall and like fight or whatever, but like, I don't really want to leave my home. So I think at that point it gets complicated, but I think my first course of action would be to try and collab. Okay. And you think that's what Mance Raider should do? Yeah. Although I'm not sure about the history of you know, because he was he he was on the side of the wall for quite a few years. So from mm-hmm. his his perspective, it might be like I was going to mention this later too. But like from his perspective, it might be like like you said, like he's already tried that or he's seen that that's not a possibility, and that's why he's taking this other step. But like I I don't know. I was kind of speculating, and I was like 
I feel like especially now that John's kind of with them, like, I feel like it'll just complicate our emotions further of now we can't <laughs> think of them as villains, you know, because now we'll see it from yeah. their perspective. And we'll, like, I'm sure we'll get some form of heart to heart of, like, Raider being like, you know, like, this is the reality of, like, what we're doing. Like, whether he's, like, speaking to all his people and he's like, this is why we're doing this. Like, this is our purpose. Like, I feel like we're definitely going to get a bit of that and it'll just be... And John will get that, too, where he's like, fuck, like, whose side am I on, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I think... So, yeah, I think lots I would try conflict. that. Lots of conflict. Lots of conflict. Lots of, lots of like, what should be done, what needs versus what needs to be done versus if it's the same... But yeah, complications will happen. Okay. All right. That's, it's good to get, be thinking about the other, you know, side of things sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks, Leah, for your questions. Um, Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have uh, some questions from Asfandiar and... So, question one. Is status Azora High? Who's that? I remember, like, Melisandre's prophecy of, like, the savior being reborn and status is the one with the burning sword. Like, that whole thing. No. Stannis He's is not? definitely not. Nope. Okay. Uh, is this, like... A... So, the question is, do we trust this prophecy? Like, is somebody Azora High? I think we'd kind of gotten to the conclusion of like, oh, maybe it's Danny. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yeah. kind of the still the train I'm on board. Okay. And as fun as like next thing, part of the question was like, what could be the other options? And I think we both kind of agree on Danny. Yeah. Okay. Now he brought this up, but there, I'm going to get to this, but there's, uh, so Ola, I be- believe, who is, also not spoiled on the series and is reading along brought up a thought during like this was like way back when okay. and i was like i'm gonna bookmark this and bring it up during the wrap up um so remember when we were uh jack and hagar like took off his face and revealed to be like a totally different i don't know like he changed his face and went off yeah so um the thought was that jack and hagar is a faceless man. Do you remember those assassins that we've heard about? Nope. Oh. <laughs> okay, I don't well, what that is. the faceless men are like really good assassins. And like, whenever somebody's like, we need to get this, have this person killed, they're like, well, we could call the faceless men, but it would be so much money. So instead, we're just gonna kill them. Like, we could just send somebody with some. I think, like, uh, when they send somebody to kill Danny, their debate, like, whether it's going to be a faceless man, they're like, no, let's just promise somebody a lordship because it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't right. mean anything. Um, and I think the other time it comes up is when uh, Courtney Penrose, like, the Castellan at Storm's End is killed by the Shadow and nobody knows how. So people are, like, speculating whether it's the faceless man who did it. Okay. So... Is Jaken Hagar a faceless man? So that's why he's such a good assassin and able to, like, that's the theory. Yeah. Like, that's why he's able to. Mm-hmm. But then why would he be, like, trapped in that dungeon? Like, why would Yeah, he that just... is, like, so Ola's theory is that, or, I don't, I can't, okay, I don't have all the exact phrasing. It's kind of, like, scattered. But, like, that he got into the dungeons to get near his victim. Like, there he was there oh, to kill somebody. Okay, right, right. So, like... Who was his victim? Who sent him there? Oh, okay. Huh. Um. Because we also don't know, like, when he was there type thing. Like, when he first got there, right? Because I was like... Yeah. I'm, like, going through my head of, like, who I know We just has know been that uh, Yorin, that's his name, right? Yorin found him in the dungeons. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Because I'm just thinking, like, he could have been there for a while, but he could have also yeah. just gotten there before Yorin. And in terms of, like, just gotten there, we didn't really know anyone who was, like, who we kind of valued, not valued, but anyone that, like, kind of stood out to us in the dungeons at that point. Um, Mm -hmm. But, like, 
you know, back in the day, like, Ned was in the dungeons, and then, like... Right. So, like, I feel like that would be the only, like, big deal person mm-hmm. that he could be there to kill. So, like, that's a possibility. Right. Like, if so we're wait, following the theory. first... Okay. Yeah. Do you think he's a faceless man? Um, I think that's... I don't know if I think he's a faceless man, but if I think he's a faceless man... <laughs> I'm going to say he's there to kill Ned because no one else that I know of was in the dungeons where I would say, oh, it's relevant to the story that he was yeah. there. Um, yeah, people always are like, maybe he was there because he knew that Yorin would be looking for people and his actual goal was like somebody in the Night's Watch or like on the road to Night's Watch or something. Yeah. But um, then, yeah. Okay. Now the second part of this theory that Ola brought up, that uh, Asfandiar also brought up, is that people think that Jaken Hagar is Sirio Farrell. <gasps> like Sirio, Sirio? Yeah, Why? like the Arya's dancing teacher. Because he, like, we never see him, like, die, die. We're just like, you know, he left. he's left with, I think... Marin Trant and he's got a wooden sword and Marin Trant's got all this like fancy armor and whatever. Oh. So it's like kind of a foregone conclusion that Sirio would die, but we never see it. And yeah. then like Sirio disappears and then like a few chapters later, Jaken Hagar is around, you know? I don't know though. <laughs> and Jaken no, Hagar like... can change face, so But like the motivation, the like sword yeah. strategy. I don't think so. I that... mean they're that's cool. They're both but I like don't think Arya's so. they kind of like not teachers, but like, you know, mentors, keep, mentors, kind of. Yeah. To, yeah. Just like yeah. older figures that are there and also do like fighting, killing kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think so. Because I think the fighting techniques are like fundamentally like there's just not any similarity in the fighting slash conflict techniques. Who knows how good he is at playing each character? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't okay. think so. I but it's like a cool Sirio, theory, right? That is really cool. <laughs> but I just don't think I believe it. Just because Sirio's like, I don't know, Sirio's such a specific character with such specific like mannerisms and personality yeah. traits. And if he ends think... up being Jaken, like that moment where he like kind of gives up his life to save Arya, it, it just means a little less. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I just think it's like a different person. Like Sirio's too specific of a person to be someone as blank slate as Jaken Hagar. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, so that was that. Um, Asfandar also sent in uh, a few, like, prompts for a game of who or what. Ooh, we can get, yes, we do can it. do those in a little bit, okay. but I want to cover a couple more things. So there's, like, a theory that I, when I was, like, trying to think of, this one I'm not sure... There's, like, not a lot of evidence behind it, so I was like, I don't know if this is worth sharing or not. But I'm going to just tell you. Yay! Okay, so the theory is that there is a dragon beneath Winterfell. Huh? Yeah. So, you know how there's, like, the hot springs in Winterfell? And then, um, I, I need to bring out a quote here. In Bran's last chapter, when he's inside Summer, he, like, has this vision. And it kind of sounds like he's describing a a dragon. Let me get okay. there. <laughs> okay. So the quote uh, from Bran's last chapter, as, uh, as Summer, like, kind of looks up into the sky. The smoke and ash clouded his eyes, and in the sky he saw a great winged snake whose roar was a river of flame. He bared his teeth, but then the snake was gone. So some people like think that that's the dragon showing itself somehow because of the destruction of Winterfell. And yeah, like that's kind of all the evidence that we have so far to this theory. What do you think? I really like that theory. Like, I really want it to be true. And I feel like it kind of, it, it, like, it adheres, it, it yeah. adheres and to, like, I the think... theme of, like, a song of ice and fire. And it's, like, this place right. that's super, like, winter. And then, like, the hot springs kind of make, like, I want that to be true. But, yeah, there's not really a lot of Another evidence. thing that's, like, kind of lends to this theory that I've read some places is that 
like the way Winterfell is designed, like it's got these two like boundary walls, right? Yeah. And a moat, a dry moat between them, or maybe it's not a dry moat. It's a straight up moat. Um, But the way the walls are is that the inner wall is higher than the outer wall. Okay. Oh, so, so it's like it's on the, yeah. So it's to keep it. It's almost as if the walls are meant to keep something inside as opposed to keep something outside. So people are like, mm, okay, is it you know keeping in a dragon, but also dragons have wings; they can just fly. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. I love that in theory, but it's probably not a thing. But that's really cool. Yeah. Um. The other, do you, okay, so some other, like, random theories and stuff. So, do you remember Patchface? Patchface, is that the dude with, um, Stannis' daughter? Yeah, he's yeah. the, yeah, he's the jester in Stannis' court. Mm-hmm. And he sings this song, the shadows come to dance, my lord, dance, my lord, dance, my lord. The shadows come to stay, my lord, stay, my lord, stay, my lord. Do you think that is any kind of... And it has any con- kind of connection to uh, the Shadow Babies. Shadow Babies, damn! Oh my god! Shadows come to shadows come to dance. I mean, it's probably just like, oh, I'm sure it does, but I I think it's probably like, um, come to dance, come to stay. It's probably just like a, oh, like the shadows don't go away. Like there's consequences, you know? Right. But what, how does Patchface know about shadows? I, I don't know. Maybe Patchface is like a prophesizer, magician. Okay. Another theory. Now I'm kind of pulling these kind of out of the air as things come up. (laughs) So some people think that Patchface is the drowned god. Like, like. Theon's like the god people? that yeah like the Greyjoys pray to yeah. because remember he was in a shipwreck with Stannis's parents and he was like underwater for like three days or something mm-hmm. and then when he came up he was like totally different person but he was still alive Oh shit! so people are like he came from the sea or I don't know <laughs> yeah. oh that's cool I feel like that could be true and yeah then and then like, like it would make sense how he could potentially no, have like prophecy stuff. type yeah. things yeah oh that's really cool yeah, yeah, yeah i i like that theory um another theory uh, so you remember how varus is a mermaid yeah you know who else is a mermaid who sir mandon moore why uh because he saw Tyrion destroy all the life in the Blackwater, and that's why he attacked him. Stop. <laughs> no. Why and did people since think he's a mermaid, mermaid, he didn't really drown. He's alive and will come back to haunt Tyrion. Uh-huh. Right. There, this whole, like... Varys is a mermaid theory is actually very elaborate and I cannot wait until we get to the point where I can read you the whole thing because it is just delightful. <laughs> so funny. I don't but think I believe it. But here's another morsel of it. I don't believe it, but that's funny. I love that. I support those who do. <laughs> All right. The only other thing I can think of there's this theory that I haven't actually tested out, but there's a theory that anytime somebody's having arbor wine, like wine from the arbor, arbor gold, I think. Yeah. In whichever scene that they're having it, somebody in that scene is lying. Lying? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Like, uh, you know, Cersei and Tyrion will be in a scene together and Tyrion will like be serving wine and... I think the one instance that I, like, noted it was that he gives her wine and it's the time that he poisons her. So she has to, like, spend the whole day on the toilet the next day. Yeah. So, like, that kind of thing. I I would want us to, like, kind of follow this. Yeah. Yeah, and see if that actually comes up. Okay. Interesting. Um, And I guess there's, like, a little bit of an update on the Jon Snow is Lyanna's kid because, like... You know, we had like Daddy saw that vision of the blue flower growing in a wall of ice. You know, yeah. 
And, you know, blue flowers are kind of associated with Liana, so that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I think we talked about it, but do you remember how so Danny had that vision, which she later discusses with Jorah, and they're, they think that it's uh, Rhaegar and his wife yeah. talking about their kid who is like the prince that was promised. His is the song of ice and fire, all of that shit. Yeah. And he's like, there must be one more. But like if people think that the, there must be one more is like, I have two kids, but I need another one to complete the trio. You right, know, yeah. the dragon has three heads. Yeah. So that's why he went seeking Liana so that he could even have another kid. Right. And then John's so there's like that. the third head of the dragon. Yeah. Oh. So that's the theory. <laughs> that's like adding on to that theory. Okay. I guess that's the evidence we have in this book. Yeah. Um... I think that's like all of I'm theoried out <laughs> that's all yeah. the theories I can come up with okay. I, after the next book there's gonna be so many more theories that we can discuss really just because they're like yeah like a lot more of the story would have happened but also there was a longer gap between book three and book four like it was what five or six years or something what? like between when they came out yeah oh when they came okay yeah yeah so, like, it gave people a lot of time to theorize, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then, like, similarly, between book four and five, there was also a really long gap. So there's, like, a lot of theories oh that people gosh. had. But then, like, a lot of them were debunked in book five. So it's, it's like, a whole oh, thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can't wait to get into all of them. Okay, cool. We'll be, like, 80 and still <laughs> discussing <laughs> the theories. Oh, oh if we're 80, George R. R. Martin would definitely be dead. And nah. I really hope he comes out. I, I'm, oh, I don't want to go down this, but like, yeah. I think we'll get one more book, but what but we need is out. two more books. Right. And that, I don't, I don't see the two happening. There's and two left, the saddest... like in the series? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's scary. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I don't want to get... I feel really sad every time it comes up because I just really want to read the book and I see... Oh, no, no, no. It's already... Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, back into some other shit. So, I forgot to ask you this question. Which animal would you want to work into? Ooh. Aww. I would want it to be an owl. That's cool. Except I'm not a night owl. I like my sleep. Mm -hmm. But like I will sleep during the day. So I guess if I like, you know, as long as I got the sleep, it wouldn't matter when I slept. You know, I kind of want to be um, like a cat. <gasps> I want to be a cat. No, I called him on that. No, I said <laughs> Okay, it. fine. You can be a cat. I want to be a house cat. A okay. spoiled house cat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want to be a cat. <laughs> That would be so fun. I, you know what? It's not so much that I want to be a cat. It's that I think I am a cat, yeah. but I'm just like, I just ended up human. It's a mistake. Ah, that's funny. Yeah. Cat. That's where we're at. Okay. All right. But we'll at the same the time, the conflict best is... Best cat buds. Yeah. But at the same time, the conflict with that is I want to be something that flies, but I still want to yeah. be a cat. Can I be a cat with wings? Like, is that an option? <laughs> I think that's a bat. No, <laughs> Yeah, um, that's really uh, Okay, all right, fine. Oh. But see, like, working into, but, like, you got to come back to your body to eat and stuff. But, like, the greatest thing about being a cat is that you just get to eat and nap. But, like, your body doesn't oh. gain any of that. So, like, it's not the same. So maybe I would just want to be a bird. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, like, an eagle or something so that nobody messes with me. Good point. Okay. Uh, so the last kind of question, not, not last, one of the last is I want to get like your thoughts, updates on like some secondary characters and just tell me where do you think they are? What are they going to do? Kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Benjamin Stark. Okay. I think that he's like with Mance Raider. Oh. And John's gonna run into him and be like, Bro. and he's like alive and well, but now not on his side. Sorry. Uh, so Benjen is alive, not zombie-fied. <laughs> he's alive and on Mance Raider's side. 
Yes. Or at least okay. like John, kind of like that traitor on his side type thing. Got it. Okay. What about Samuel Tarley? I think that, you know, Sam is, you know, still with the Mormont crew. I don't think they've died yet, so I think he's with them. And, I mean, since no one was actually able to get back to them to tell them that Mance Raider is on his way, um, that might be an issue. There might be some death coming up, but I'm hoping that they just, like, go back and make it home in time. Yeah. <laughs> There's hope. Mm. Is there, though? Uh, uh, okay. Hope. Next, we have Barristan Salmi. Oh, the dude who was demoted, and then he was like, Rah! Yeah. Um, Not even demoted, like, forced to retire. Oh, and then they, he was like, I'm gonna go to the true king or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember where I said he was gonna go. Um, and maybe he's, like, trying to find Danny. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you think he'll find her? Mm, probably not. Okay, well, <laughs> there's that. Okay, great. End of story. Love that. <laughs> uh, the Hound. Oh, yeah. Didn't I say he was, like, going to the wall or something? I don't remember. Um, I think everyone's going to the wall, though, so maybe I need <laughs> to stop saying that. Because um, he was just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go be free. Peace out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea where he is. He's probably, let's say he's going to the wall, because everyone's going to the wall these days. Okay. The mountain. Ooh, where is he? Uh, doing Tywin's dirty work? I don't know. Okay, that that yeah. was, like, we he's saw him probably... leave yeah, he... Harrenhal at one point, but we never heard of where he went, like, where he ended up. Yeah, hopefully he, like, died or something, but probably not. <laughs> um, Wouldn't that be great? That would be so good if he just got eliminated, but no, he's definitely off, like, torturing some poor civilians. Okay. Beric Dondarrion. Who is that? Um... He's the 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 hanging out with Thor's of Mir, and we hear about them like causing trouble for <gasps> oh, the Lannisters yeah! all the time. <laughs> Hopefully, he's still doing that. I hope he's still <laughs> alive and well. That it restores my hope in this world. Okay, Brienne. Ooh, Brienne's with Catelyn. Um. Oh yeah, and like Catelyn was like, Brienne, give me your sword. So Brienne's probably mm -hmm. like, oh my god. What did you just do? Damn. <laughs> but, like, pop off. So, you know, she's at River Run. Okay. <laughs> All right, she's hanging out. Um, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. I had more people, which I don't remember right now. Um, Ramsey Snow. Yeah, I mean, he's probably gonna run back over to his dad and be like, Look, dad, I did this! Um, I don't know why that's what he sounds like. And his dad would be like, good job, kiddo! His dad will probably be like, the fuck? Um... Right, what about his dad? Like, Bruce Bolton. <laughs> yeah, he's... What's he up to? I mean, he's still at Heron Hall, So he's probably... I don't know. I mean, he's still trying to get revenge on everyone who, like, wasn't on their side or whatever, right? So. On um, revenge on who? Revenge on, like, like, everyone that supported the Lannisters at all. Like, he's, like. Oh, right. He's weeding and... out all the. Yeah, okay. He's pulling a Stannis. Well, that was kind of like Vargo Hote is doing that, but we assume yeah. he's doing it on Bruce's behalf. Yeah. Okay, um. There was somebody that I literally just thought, but I did not write down, and now I don't forget. Uh... Oh, the phrase as a collective. <laughs> the phrase, oh yeah, because now the alliance fell through, and they're just like, ah, where's so my princess? So you think it's like done for, like no more alliance for sure? I don't think, so. yeah, I don't think so. I think it's done for. I think we need to screw with the Winterfells a little bit, or the Winterfells, <laughs> the Starks a little bit more, because they haven't had enough things go wrong in their life. Um, Yeah, no, the Freys are definitely going to be out here causing trouble, Um, because, yeah. 
You saying Winterfell has reminded me. I can't remember. I, I can't remember which podcast. I think it was a cast of Thrones, but they used to call like all the, all the like non Stark Winterfell people the Winterfellas. No, <laughs> the Winterfellas. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I can't think of any other minor character. Wow, Roderick's, I'm sure there's a bazillion. Roderick's a winter fella. Or was. Hey. Too soon. <laughs> I'm not... Too soon. <laughs> he was, though. Like, it's no. true. I... No, he is. Okay. He lives on in our hearts that we don't have. Okay, Asha Greyjoy. Asha. Oh, Asha. Um, sorry. Um, she's vibing. She's definitely gloating to her father and being like, yeah, your son's incapable. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I can't think of any. Okay. Okay. I think Brain's shutting down. We're good. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Uh, let's do. Uh, okay. I'm gonna read out the POV characters that we have, and you're gonna tell me what you're gonna expect. What your predictions for them in book three? Okay. Uh-huh. Tyrion. Quick! 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 Tyrion, um, hopefully gets better, his health. Um, hopefully his family starts respecting him, but I have very low hopes for that. Okay, but what's he gonna do? I don't know. He's, he's gonna, I don't know, maybe he'll get, like, a smaller position of power and then kind of be in that. Okay. Tywin. Like, I'm just gonna, not POV, but I'm gonna yeah, loop okay. in the people Tywin around Tywin is handing <laughs> slash regenting okay. being in power yeah. joffrey being annoying um torturing sansa um being annoying he's to supposed marjorie. to be marrying marjorie okay yeah, yeah getting married probably at some point um archery cersei um cersei being cersei <laughs> Cersei, 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 sorcery, <laughs> Cersei's sorcery, um, being annoying, um, planning for the wedding, torturing everyone, being really annoying, making me hate her, all of that. Okay, uh, I think we've wrapped up on that. Arya, Arya is oh, getting to River Run, hanging out with her mom, um, hanging out with Gendry. Um, why? But not hot pie. Oh yeah, hot pie's there too. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, he yielded. Okay, I'm never letting that go. <laughs> um, I yield. Um, for some reason, there's a part of me that thinks, for some reason, like Arya and Gendry is gonna be pushed, like as a couple type thing. Oh, okay. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't want that, but I feel like it'll be pushed. Um. <laughs> By whom? Like, like by their interactions. I don't know, like, who okay. side it'll be from. I haven't thought this through. Like, this thought just came into my head. Um, I just feel like it'll be, like, a George R. R. Martin push. Um, okay. Yeah, meeting up with her mom. Hopefully getting there. It would be the ultimate Robert getting together with Liana remake. What do you mean? Because <gasps> Gendry's Robert's oh, son. <laughs> Okay, now this is definitely gonna happen. Okay, <laughs> okay, this isn't just like a random thought. I stand by this. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's like intergenerational, okay. like <laughs> right. Like Robert was all about that, but like what we hear from Ned, Liana wasn't necessarily all about that. <laughs> so then maybe it's like Gendry might like her, and Arya might be like, "What the fuck? You're supposed to be my friend." Okay. Which would probably oh, follow the theme yeah. of our female characters so far in this series. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jon Snow. Um, Jon Snow, um, you know, having an identity crisis, because now that Theon's dead, he's got to take over that role. Um, <laughs> probably just struggling internally with like, oh, I'm a man of the Night's Watch, but, you know, these people kind of have a point. And then, I mean, probably attacking the wall. Um, Yeah. Attacking the Okay. Wall. Sansa Stark. Um, getting tortured. Um, <laughs> hopefully escaping, but probably not with Dantos on Joffrey's wedding night. Okay. Uh, Bren Stark. 
Who? Oh, Bran. Bran. I thought you said... I didn't even say Brandon this time. No, it's... Where do you get so good? Because it sounded like you... Like, the way you said Bran almost sounded like Brienne. And then when I heard Stark, I got confused. Because I was like, Brienne. Bran. Bran. Yeah. Bran is um <laughs> going eastward or whatever, wherever they were going to go. I don't know. Vibing. Living his life. They were going north. Okay, yeah. Going north. Um, Finding someone that they can trust. Uh, Rickon is going east. Right, right. So finding someone they can trust. Chilling there. Figuring out what's up. Catelyn. River Run. Panicking. Sadness. Caesarea. <laughs> maybe some faith is restored. I don't know. Rob. Fighting. Fight, fight, fight. Kill, kill, kill. Um, You know, war. Not die, die, die. Hopefully not die, die, die. <laughs> um, probably guilt, guilt, guilt about Theon. Um, probably some sort of like altercation with his mom and like a fight. Okay. Um oh, okay, next up is Theon, but he's dead. Nah. I just have a list of all the POVs. Yeah. Uh Daenerys. Daenerys. Um going to Illyrio. Um I feel like for Danny, I'd written something down. Give me a second. I feel like there's gonna be some sort of conflict where like Illyrio's like, I want your dragons, obviously, and then Danny's like, no. And then there's, like, a conflict where, like, Illyrio, like, exposes her because revenge. And then now now okay. everyone knows that Danny has dragons and Dran- Danny's coming back, so. But she's not making that a secret. Yeah, but, like, now people will just find out. Like, because, ne- like, so far, because she was so far away, like, no one kind of knew yet. This is just another mm-hmm. way that, like. People so are, out. like, the people going to do something about the fact that she has dragons now? Probably. She'll probably try and send more assassins and stuff and try to figure out where she is. Okay. Davos. Dead or not? Nope. He is alive, sir. Because otherwise, every single character got, that got introduced also died. Mm-hmm. Okay, hopefully not dead. I'm gonna say not dead. Doing what? Um, you know, Davos saying... Oh, wait, Stannis <laughs> is, like, gone, or... What? Wait, what happened to Stannis? He's probably back on Dragonstone. Stannis? He, like, ran away? Yeah. Okay, I'd forgotten. Um, yeah. Oh, but Davos, if he's alive, he's, like, there. Or maybe he's dead then. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's all the POVs. Uh, who do you think is gonna die in the next book? Major character type. Cat. Like the ones, like in the first book, it was probably dead. In the second one, it was like Renly. Yeah. Um. Catelyn. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say just Catelyn, and then maybe like, maybe like, um, Afray, probably, just because there's so many of them. Someone's <laughs> bound to die. Okay. What if, Any of the what if Walder Lannis- Frey dies? Ooh, that would be <laughs> that would be civil war in itself. Nah. Yeah, I think he'll die and then whoever's first in line moves in or whatever. And then the 85th person goes to 84th. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, actually, they would probably go down to like 96 because... No, actually, never mind. No, 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 never mind. What? You're right. Okay, I, I was doing math wrong. Okay. Royalty math, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Ugh. Okay. Uh, What was my question? Okay, so any of the Lannisters? Um, Maybe like a side character Lannister. I don't think any of the main like Lannisters Lancel will die. Lannister or something? Yeah, like I don't think any of the main Lannisters will die. What about Baratheons? Think there's only like alive. really stannis well technically joffrey technically is a bra- like not technically like no you know no they'll be alive okay so joffrey's in lannister land <laughs> like you yeah. count him as a lannister which oh, he yeah. is but yeah he is not a Baratheon. and none of the Baratheons, like stannis or his people are not gonna die no uh so starks you said catelyn uh, is that your answer also for Tully's? Is her dad going to die? Is he still going to be like, is he somehow going to outlive her? <laughs> I think the dad will definitely die. I think, oh, you know, it would be sad if the Blackfish died. Oh, yeah, that would be really sad. Honestly, I would, 
I I could almost deal with Kathleen dying. Like it would suck, but if the blackfish died, it would be like a little extra suck. <laughs> Damn. Okay. I He's know a where, cool dude. Okay. I know where your loyalties lie. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, what about the Aaron's? Um, I don't think any of them are going to die, unfortunately. Any other Greyjoys? Mm. Ooh, what if the dad died? No, probably not. Okay. I feel like we might not even hear from the Greyjoys for a solid bit. Because, like, I mean, I guess, like, Asha could become a main character, like a POV. That would be cool. But I don't think so. We might we might just we might just not see them for a bit. If that's possible. Uh the Tyrells. Uh I don't think any of them are gonna die. And if they are, I don't know their names anyway. Any of Danny's people? Hopefully not. There's very few of them, so I'm gonna go ahead and say no. <laughs> okay. Uh I think we've covered like Oh, any oh, Night's Watch. Ooh, probably a lot of Night's Watch deaths. Probably, like, all of his friends that he, like, met before, you know? But probably, like, maybe a couple of them survive, like, Sam, and then, like, one of his, like, ranger friends, hopefully. Oh, uh, what about... Mormont will probably die, fight. which is kind of sad. Okay. Because he'll die thinking that John <laughs> betrayed them. Will he ever even get to that, <laughs> is oh the question. God. No, I think he'll get to that. Okay. What about uh, any of the free folk? I'm sure some of them will die. Like, we know, like, four of them by name now. There's, like, uh, Rattle Shirt, <laughs> Egret, Mance Raider. I don't think any one of them other will person. die. I don't think any of them will die. Maybe Rattle Shirt. That could be fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think that is that. Okay. Now we will wrap up with a game of who or what or maybe a clash of who or what i don't know <gasps> wow a storm of who or what nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so these are terms that will be they'll come up in book three so okay. it's good like well it's good to like and then i could be like i asked you about that and you totally got it wrong yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay yeah who or what is the knight's king the knight's king yeah there's a Night's Watch. Didn't know we had a king. Um, the Night's King. Is it a person or a thing or a place or what? It's a person. Okay. Night's King. Maybe it's just like Mance Raider's like accomplice. Okay. Yeah. Who or what is Unsullied? Unsullied? Isn't that just like a word? <laughs> it is a word. <laughs> But in this, it's a proper noun. Oh, so it's like a, <coughs> excuse me, it's like a person, question mark, um, unsullied. Maybe it's like a brand of, um, it's like a brand of, um, it's a brand of, um. Uh, Hair care products? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a brand of, um, like the others or something, like. Somewhere in that realm, like there's a group of them. Like it's like a magical thing. Okay. Yeah. Who or what is Grey Worm? Grey Worm? Mm hmm. Huh? Um, Grey Worm, maybe like Lukewarm, but like the Grey Joyce terminology for Lukewarm? No, Warm, W A R M. Warm, W O R M. Oh, like Worm, Grey Worm. Worm, a worm, yes, Worm. <laughs> Okay, Grey Worm, um, Grey Worm, I, maybe it's a sigil. Okay, maybe it's Tyrion's new pet. Who knows? <laughs> uh, who or what is Widow's Whale? I'm just going Widow's Peak. <laughs> widow's Whale, maybe it's a Widow's Peak in the shape of a whale. It's whale, W-A-I-L. Oh, okay. Widow, wi widow's whale. Um, oh, maybe it's like a, like, it's like another, like, magical thing that's like, oh, if you hear a widow's whale, it's like seeing like a black cat. <laughs> it's like know? a siren's call. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay. Who or what is Oathkeeper? I think we've heard this before. 
Do I remember what it means? No. Um, Oath Keeper. Maybe it's like, um, you know, like in Harry Potter, when like you don't want like the like the location or like someone like keeps like the information or whatever. It's like the oath thingy. It's like a similar thing, where it's like a magical thing slash person. So it's a person slash kay. entity. It's like a title for yes. a person. Yes. Okay. Who or what is Giant Spain? Giant Spain. This one's a fave. For me, it's like, like you know, we know now that there's giants. We've had it confirmed a few times. It's just the giants' kids, baby giants. Spain. Okay. 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 Um, who or what is Stoneheart? Stoneheart. Ooh. Maybe like a location. Okay. I'm definitely getting all of these wrong. I can feel your judgment. Who or what is Cold Hands? St- Wait, what was the fir- one you said before? Storm. St- Stoneheart. Stoneheart. Cold Heart? Cold Hands. Oh, Stoneheart. Cold Hands. This is like a weird head, shoulder, knees, and toes, like, <laughs> going on here. I purposely put those, like, next to each um, other just to trip you off. What was, what was the second one? Cold hands. Cold, you know, someone with cold hands. Like, I don't, is cold hands, like, okay, maybe it's, like, an expression for when you see another, an other, like, like, capital O, mm-hmm. and you get, like, cold hands, like, you get scared. Maybe it's like, oh, you get cold hands because you feel they're like Instead of like cold feet, you get cold hands? Yeah, yeah. But it's like in relation to the fear that you experience. Cold hands. (laughs) That's too good. That is too good. Okay. Um, That's all I got. Okay, nice. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. That's funny. Okay. (laughs) Whew. All right. Uh, Okay, we'll do two quick things. This is such a long episode and I have to edit it. Oh, man. Okay, so focus. Next episode, we are reading the next story of Dunkin' Egg, which is called The Sworn Sword. Ooh, a storm of swords. But Sworn Sword. Okay. Cool. You got any? What do you think it'll be? Sworn sword. Um, isn't like egg dunks sworn sword? Mm, squire. No. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I'll give you an example of somebody who is a sworn sword. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, this is a. I wanted to ask you about this minor character actually, but um, Bronn is Tyrion's sworn sword. Oh. Okay. What do you think Bronn's going to be up to? Side note. <laughs> Bronn, um, hopefully still on Tyrion's side. That would be nice. Okay. All right. Back to Dunkin' Egg. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe like, maybe it's like Egg gets jealous because now that, because you know how he was going to get properly trained like as a, mm-hmm. as a knight, um, Dunk was. So maybe now that Dunk got trained, he found a new bestie. But no, bestie Dunk said no thanks. To getting trained? And I'm actually gonna go take a trip and oh, okay, Egg can yeah, come yeah. with me. Okay, maybe, so they meet like a, <clears throat> me, they meet like someone who becomes Dunk's sword sword and then Egg gets jealous and it causes conflict. Okay. Alright. Okay. That's, that's that yay for that so the very last thing i have to say before we wrap up again i keep saying wrap up wrap up wrap up okay move it along we will have a guest next episode when we cover the sworn sword and it is taylor from deus ex media the podcast network that the restricted section is a part of so Taylor is one of our friends there. Taylor works for the network and used to co-host of The Eldest Gods. So if y'all have heard of that, you should know who Taylor is. 
And from what I hear, Taylor is like a fellow history geography nerd. So I look Ooh. forward to nerding out with Taylor. Nice, nice. So excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. So everyone, follow, follow us on Instagram. It's at Pop Culture Symposium. Send us an email, popculturesymposium at gmail.com, and join our Discord. And we can continue to have this conversation in those, you know, different uh, platforms because this is two and a half hours almost. And what are we even talking about? Uh, I was like, this is going to be a quick 45 minutes. We can do this. (laughs) That's funny. 45 minutes into it, I am like, oh, wow, I have not gotten to anything. But thank you to everyone who contributed. I tried to credit everybody I could, but if I missed you, I am so sorry. Please let me know and I will shout you out and just thanks for participating. It was so fun. It's just so much more fun when like people are engaged. Mm -hmm. And... I am looking forward to book three. Yeah. Yay! Oh my gosh. Thank you, guys. After we read book three, we'll be more than halfway through the series. Wow. But book three is like one of the longest books, so it's going to take us a lovely, while. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes. Okay. I keep saying book three. Now I can say Storm of Swords. <laughs> okay. Until next time. Farewell, my friends. Talk to you later. Thank mm-hmm. you.